file. You get your ballot artwork through PDFs. You get your BDF, which tells these machines how to read ballots. And you get your ADF, which tells that machine how to mark ballots, which also we have some future applications of that we can talk about. Uh, so you just copy those files to your sticks? Sorry? Well, you just copy those files to your sticks? Correct. Yep. Just a simple it's copy. a simple master file. Uh, you put the ADF on a certain stick. It, it can be any stick for that device because there's no tabulation. Mm -hmm. Certified sticks for this device, our initial plan was any stick commercially available, but that has to be certified. Um, uh, <laughs> so I guess I'll talk about it just very briefly. So what we already have coming down the map, and I, can, I know it'll be important for you guys. Do you want to talk about these? Okay. Uh, so print now our ballot on demand system. Um, that we are releasing our first beta version that we'll be able to run clean successful elections with for May, uh, but we're expanding the functionality re really towards what the longer term functionality will be for November. <coughs> and that's ultimately where we could potentially come up with things like custom test deck generation software for you long term. Uh, but as is now, what we already have, we will be able to duplex up to 22 inch ballots. The important thing for Cuyahoga County to know is that we will not be charging a per click or per ballot fee. You guys will be able to source your own paper and toner. You pay us for the software basically to run the system after the initial purchase and that's it. And it's yours to manage. So you can source your paper stock from Amazon, Staples, wherever you want to buy it from and control your costs that way. Again, you're not beholden to us. So I don't know what you guys get charged uh, on a per price, per, per, per page price right now, but I guarantee you will be cutting it significantly in our system. Uh, our software is also very affordable on that end as well. Um, it will integrate 100% seamlessly with clear design and the rest of our system, uh, in including the inclusion of variable data on it or barcodes that contain ballot style information basically the inclusion of every, anything else that you need to put on your ballots from the rest of the system. Uh, the setup really is a computer terminal and a printer that is an Oki data printer. We have a couple different versions, but not much bigger than that, uh, depending on what your capacity uh, functions are gonna be. Um, it will also print barcodes on the spot for the activation of our touchscreen ballot style selection, uh, so you can print that on the spot, scan it on the touch screens and activate ballot style. Um, and then it'll do everything else that you're used to doing, setting batch printing and so on, that if you wanted to, you know, you had requests for 20 ballots from precinct one, and 10 from precinct two and so on, you can set a job to have all of those print out in addition to, you know, kind of in the same order as what your labels would be and so on out of your VR system for your absence emailing. You, you guys probably go to a mail house with your stuff. Just you have to do that. Exports. And then custom test next year. Will it be about. a one-to-one -one relationship with the printer and the computer, or could you network like two together and have one-to-one? One. One -one. Yeah, one-to-one. -one. And so it's not going through a server, and it will be real-time very quickly. So it could hypothetically, just based on the walkthrough and observation I did here last year with you guys, uh, I see it at least the one-off printer as being a good potential solution for you guys when you're checking in voters in your early voting center. I know that ballot on demand, just the, the speed of things and all of that hasn't really been an option. I think that we'll be able to take care of that for you pretty effectively. Do you use DIMS to check in voters or do you use poll books and then integrate them? No. Use right now we use DIMS. DIMS. There's DIMS. some changes coming like through so there's different yeah. options. Okay. If DIMS can populate a hot folder with an export, we can monitor that hot folder and create the ballot for the voter as they stand here. What you're saying is only one computer terminal to print. Correct, and that's so things don't get commingled or anything like that. It's just it's best practice to do things that way. You don't want two two different ballot styles getting printed on the same printer at the same time and grabbing the wrong one and so on. Uh, but it is an affordable solution because, again, 
our printing requirements are much, le much less stringent than any other system because of the imaging that we take and we're able to use commercially available printers. So it's really just the software driving the rest of it and then you can use things like an Oki data printer. Um, it just makes the, the whole process more manageable for you guys. Because again, you <laughs> it's actually, expensive. As you say that, I'm actually curious if, if combining workstations and printers so like so, is an option. I mean, we will uh, for our early voting. We'll have 24 yeah. computer stations set up here, yeah. and so um, I think it would be successful to you have put a switch in or have two right. yeah two computers yeah. going to one printer. Yeah. you know, in, in the middle of two employees, yeah. Yeah. And they would. Yeah, I don't think technically. I don't think it's a it's a challenge. No, we actually can do that part. If what what the one to one relationship is is we have a. A computer running this printer so for every printer you have you'll have a ballot on demand system from us but it can take data from multiple inputs from you guys does that make sense yeah. Yeah. we can network the actual computer running right. printer. Um, I guess I'll, any other questions on the ballot on demand The other piece that I just want to talk about very, very briefly, and I don't want to get too deep into this because this is more down the road, but I know you guys have the ballot delivery uh, requirement now, the accessible ballot delivery system that you guys had to implement last year. So what you saw in clear access, the way that we mark a ballot and print a machine readable ballot is the basis for what we are developing on that end as well. Uh, using the Anywhere Ballot. The Anywhere Ballot is actually a browser-based ballot marking system. So while we've hardened and localized it on that setup right there, it provides us the ability in the future to allow a voter to mark a ballot in their own browser and print off a <coughs> machine-readable ballot in their own system. Through ballot sets, we can even look at things like, because the real issue there is dupl a voter's printer duplexing a ballot to send back into you. Through ballot sets, we could actually read a single side piece of paper as part of a ballot and send it in. So there's a lot of flexibility that can come with that in the future. And my only point in telling you this is that we have the basis in our system now to grow with you over time as requirements and legislation changes to incorporate those things in. Because ultimately, it is very much agreed upon, I think, that the most accessible form of voting is allowing a voter to vote on their own circumstances. And it's always been a, a balance between accessibility and security. And when you can tie the two together, it's the, the ultimate way to go, right? And we are preparing ourselves for that. Our system was developed in a way that is ready for that. Um, so as changes come, we'll be there for you. And our system will be able to accommodate it. You won't have to go buy an entire new system like you probably would in other circumstances. And we can work with, with Democracy Live and everything you have now, but I do want you to be aware of what's coming down the pipe, that we have structured our system in a way that you will be able to get incredible use out of it in, in flexibility as things change. I think that's uh, that's about our presentation. Unless anybody has any questions on the precinct system again that you want me to run through, I'm happy to show you the yeah, programming yeah, briefly yeah, again. Yeah. Any more yeah. like, I know you want to see. Um, I have one more yeah. ingredient. Yeah. Even though it's not you know ballot on demand anything, like if we have to, like in a pinch, does it have the ability to print white ballots like at the point of finish on the Absolutely. They already do that now with access. They do. Yep. Yeah, so they do that in, in King County, too, uses at their uh, vote centers. Uh, before we had launched the, the ballot on demand, it was kind of their idea to push it. They just use their accessible devices to print out blank ballots. And, and just kind of the memory sticks, what's the memory on your memory sticks? Like 8 gig sticks or a music? Are they 8 gig 16? Yeah. It might be They're 32. They're 32. <laughs> 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 I know, it's ridiculous.
Our solar written cobalt. I mean, we got the 32 gig sticks on the state contract that are certified as well are between 25 and 50 dollars, just a, somewhere in there. But we're not. We're not. Like, it just ties into everything that we're trying to do. We're not here to sell you memory sticks. We provide them for you guys to use. But at our core, we're a software company. So everything we do is built around that. Uh, you know. Thank you. James, you mentioned Betty White earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Is it really? Yeah. I mean, subconsciously yeah. had that in that. <laughs> 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 yeah.